to another episode of the Treasure Seekers Virtual Adventure Series. I'm Sarah with an H, and I'll be your host for today's episode. Today we're gonna to be talking about some of those weird, strange things that you find on the beach while beach combing. And I'm talking about egg casings. Sometimes they look like plastic, sometimes they look like rubber. A lot of people think that they're garbage or some weird thing from the ocean. Today we're gonna to cover the most common seashell egg casings that you'll find right here in Southwest Florida, how to identify them, and how to make sure that they are either living or non-living to make sure that if you collect it, it's an ethical practice. Before we get started with the episode, make sure to subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube and that you follow us on all the social media platforms to see what our guests are finding every day on our shelling tours. Let's get started with our episode. So let's talk about where seashells come from. Now, we have two main types of seashells out here that people are typically looking for. You have gastropods and you have bivalves. Now, gastropods are gonna be the univalve shells, that's one piece. Usually they're curly, so if you're out on the beach and you find conchs or whelks, those are examples of gastropods. And then bivalves, you have things like clams, cockles, scallops, things like that. Now, most of the bivalves are gonna have a dispersal reproduction system, which means that they emit things into the water, they eventually fertilize, and that's how they begin their life. However, most of the gastropods are going to be laying egg casings. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today because they're the most obvious that you find on the beach. Now, the lightning whelk is going to be our most obvious because it's one of the largest that we have. A lot of people have found these giant chains and it looks kind of like a snake skin. These are one of the most popular to collect, as, as a matter of fact, because inside these little pods, you can actually collect the itty bitty tiny micro-sized lightning welts. Now granted, these are really cool to collect and they make great displays into jars and things, but I would encourage you to check every egg casing before you take it home with you because they still could be living. And the way that you can tell is by opening up the little chain. If you look inside the pod, squeeze it maybe a little bit, each pod is gonna be filled with fluid, and that's applicable to any of the egg casings that we're gonna to see today. If they're full of fluid and they're still hydrated, that is still a viable egg casing, whether it's in the water or on the beach. I have picked up lightning whelk egg casings on the dry sand and they were hatching right in my hands. So I've put it back in the water as soon as I could. It's important to remember that keeping a live egg casing is not an ethical beachcombing practice, and we'd encourage you to support the conservation efforts, put them back in the water, and let them live their life. Now that being said, if you find one that's all dried and crackly and definitely doesn't have any fluid left in it, you're free to keep that. They do make really cool crafts, and as a fun fact, did you know that most of these egg casings will react under a black light and change colors? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? So anyway, this giant one here is from a lightning whelk, which I have a sample of right here. Now, of course, this entire chain is produced by a lightning whelk. These are the females, these really big ones. And so if you find one that's still tied down into the ground, like if you're out in the water waiting and you see something kind of floating up like this, but it's stuck in the mud, leave it there. Because the lightning whelks actually anchor their egg casings to the ground. You'll see a really skinny tail piece on the very end, and that's what they secure in the sand. And then the rest of it will be floating up and down kind of like this. And then once the eggs hatch out, they can swim around and start their life. Now, another whelk egg casing that we get a lot is the pear whelk. Now this one is significantly smaller. And if you notice um, really closely, the uh, pods are actually a different shape slightly. Um, most of the whelk egg casings are gonna look like a big long snake skin, but they're different lengths and the pods are slightly different shapes. And keep in mind on the Atlantic side of Florida, you're gonna have a few different types of whelks than we have here on the Gulf side. So I'm only talking about the lightning whelk. 
and the pear whelk, which this is an example of one of those, a little bit smaller. Well, anyway, the pear whelks are the same basic idea. There's an anchoring piece on the end that's buried in the sand, and then a shorter, smaller strip of pods that are kind of connected like a snakeskin chain. And the same thing applies. You can look inside the pods and you can even see the little babies in there sometimes. And if they have fluid, they're still living. So that's what these little snakeskin looking things are. It's really fun to show kids, especially if you're on the beach and maybe they've never seen that before. And usually we find these egg casings, well, really all of these, in the winter to spring months. There's certain months that um, some of these mollusks are gonna be doing their breeding. So they come a little closer to shore and that's when we start seeing these wash up. So, all right, well, moving on, we also have the horse conch egg casings. Now this is a horse conch here, this big one. This is the state shell of Florida. And when they're about this big, this is when they start to reproduce. Now, the big horse conch egg casings are usually in a big mass, looks almost like a loaf of bread, how big they can get. And then sometimes they break off into smaller clumps like this one that I have here. Now the pods on these guys are actually anchored on one end individually. So it kind of looks like a bundle of flowers. And if you look at the shape of each pod, it looks more like a bugle chip. Remember those old corn chip uh, snacks that they're called bugles, you could put them on your fingers and that's what these look like to me. They're basically triangles with a bunch of ridges and texture and um, they're all anchored at the point of the triangle individually. So they're not connected in a big chain. Now there's a sticky strip that they're all anchored to and then that strip would be stuck onto a rock or a log or some other anchoring object. So most of the time you're gonna see them attached to things like pen shells or driftwood, driftwood or something else like that. Um, and the same things applies. You can look inside, you know, you can see through the walls of the little pods and see if there's babies in there. They look like little tiny uh, quinoa, almost like little tiny balls of pasta. And if they're in there and it's hydrated and full of fluid, make sure you leave it on the beach or pr preferably in the water. But anyway, so that's the horse conch egg casings. Now we're gonna move on to the smaller stuff. So we also have the true tulip and the banded tulip egg casings, which is another one we see attached to anchoring objects. So the true tulip is this guy right here. And the true tulip eggs are more uh, like little flowers and they have um, little ruffles at the top. So if you look close, you can see the little frills on the top edge of the pods. And for the banded tulips, they have more of a streamlined shape to the top of their flower. Smaller bundles, still kind of a triangular shape, and they're all anchored down on one end of the triangle. But these guys have a much smoother top. So those are the tulips. Now we're gonna go into the murexes. We have a, a lace murex and an apple murex that we find egg casings for, and occasionally we'll find rose murex eggs. So let's start with the apple. The apple murex is an animal that will lay eggs in a big communal group. So a big mass of eggs can be found at a time and they're usually from multiple snails. They're not just from one snail. So if you look close, I think these guys look like little styrofoam balls that are kind of stuck together. They're not shaped like a flower. They're not shaped like a triangle. They're more like little tiny tongue shapes almost that are puffy. Now inside these guys, again, are gonna be the little embryos. And if they're full of fluid, obviously still living. And um, usually the apple murexes are gonna be in larger groups, so they're a little more obvious. The lace murex, however, are individually anchored tiny little flutes almost. They look like champagne flutes and they have a slight purple tinge to them when they're laid. And these guys can cover a great amount of space because they lay each of the little um, eggs individually across a, a wide surface. So they're not stuck to each other, they're stuck down onto the anchoring object and that would be for the lace murex. Now something else we might see are the rose murex eggs, which we've only recently um, seen. And uh, the rose murex is a really collectible, smaller murex, it's harder to find than the others. And their egg casings are pretty tiny. These guys are more like styrofoam, but they're much smaller capsules than your apple murex are. And they're all stuck together. Now I've seen these laid inside tiny little clams. I've also seen them laid on uh, like seagrass, kind of attached to um, plant life, things like that. 
So they could be in a variety of places, but they're very small and very lightweight. Now something else pretty cool, we're gonna move into the cones now. So cone eggs, to me, look like a little longer uh, tongue-shaped or even a leaf-shaped capsule. And these guys are at attached to um, another anchoring object individually. And I have here some that are in a cockle shell, but I've also recently found them in a horseshoe crab carapace, which was pretty interesting. So it seems to me they just kind of find an empty object, a shell or a rock or it, literally anything that can provide protection, and then they lay their eggs in there. Another conch that we see a lot is the crown conch. Now the crown conch lays its eggs in small round discs that look like little balloons, and it lays them in a straight line on a strip of sticky stuff that again would be attached to a log or something heavy on the bottom of the water. Now the crown conch is something that lives in kind of like lagoons and mucky algae water. So if you do see eggs like that, you're probably gonna be in still water, not a lot of moving water, and it's like a backwater bay area. So keep your eye out for those if you're ever in one of those spaces. In our recent episode about moon snails, we covered the sand collars, which is an egg casing that the moon snails lay in the soft, silty sand, and they form basically a plastic ring. And the ring is really gritty. It has the texture of sandpaper, and it's very delicate. If you squeeze or pull it, it'll come apart pretty easily because it's actually made of mucus and sand mixed together. And when the moon snail lays these, the idea is when the hatchlings begin their life, the egg casing, which is the sand collar, will just disintegrate and dissolve. So this is not something that you're able to keep and preserve like the lightning whelk egg casing where you could just keep the, the rubbery plastic bit after they're hatched. So if you do find a moon snail egg casing, I would encourage you to leave it there because it's still going to hatch and once it hatches, the collar will be gone. So keep that in mind if you find them. Now we're going to show you a series of mini egg casings. And when I say mini, I'm talking about the species of seashells that only get maybe half an inch in length. We're talking the drills, we're talking itty bitty tiny shells that you find in piles. These are a lot harder to spot, these egg casings, because they're usually mixed in with other egg casings. Things like the golf oyster drill, or the sharp ribbed drill, or the mauve mouth drill. These little guys will actually find other egg casings and lay their eggs inside of those so that they are more likely to survive. The safety in numbers thing applies here. Now here's another one that's similar to a whelk egg pod. This is called the paper fig. And the paper fig snails have discs that are very similar shape to the whelk eggs, except Rather than being in a long chain like a snakeskin, they're in short little strips that almost look like a corn cob, and they're stuck together. Usually three, maybe as many as five, all in one spot. And again, they're really full of fluid and they're kind of slippery and rubbery and rather gross if you ask me. But those are from paper figs, which are a very delicate snail as it is. So if you find those eggs that are dried up, it might be a little hard to preserve them because they kind of fall apart. But if you find one of those corn cob shaped ones, that would be from a paper fig. So this is another common beach combing find that people consider to be a treasure. This little black square, and it has little strings on it. And if you look at it sideways, it's actually puffy. It's like a little pouch. The first time I saw one of these, I thought it was a face mask that somebody from when we were in lockdown, maybe left a face mask out on the beach or something, and I was really annoyed that it was there. But turns out, these little pods are called mermaid's purses. And these are egg casings from either a stingray, a skate, which is a stingray-like animal, or an oviparous shark. There are some sharks that will lay eggs like this, and then there are some sharks that give live birth. So there are charts you can find online to help you identify which egg pouch is from which species of animal. And that's pretty interesting because they all look almost identical. So, but anyway, if you do find one of these adorable mermaid's purses, they do make great items to add to your collection, but it is something you have to make sure is not alive before you take it. 
Usually if you hold it up to the sun, you can see if there's an embryo inside. You can also smell it. If it smells weird, it's probably dead already. If it's still uh, puffy and, and full of fluid, same rule applies, it's still living. So stick it back in the water as soon as you can. Now, one more egg casing I'd like to talk to you about is the octopus egg casings. I recently found a bunch of octopus eggs inside of a cockle shell, which was super, super exciting. Now, if you read up about octopi, you know that they're not gonna live much longer after they lay their eggs. It's kind of a sad story. However, it is really exciting to find baby octopus eggs because it's something that's supposed to be in deeper water. So if they wash up on the beach, you, get, you really have a once in a lifetime opportunity to see that. Of course, put them back in the water as soon as you can. These egg casings to me look more like water balloons with a little string attached, and they're anchored down inside some object that might provide them cover. I found them in this cockle shell. I've also seen them in glass bottles that we found on the beach one time. And I'm sure they're in all kinds of other little cavernous objects like large shells and, and things like that. I know it sounds like I'm repeating myself a lot, but we really wanna emphasize that these egg casings and the micro shells inside of them make great displays for your collection, but it's really important to leave the live ones there on the beach. If you do find some that are expired, you can always collect the little bitty baby ones and put them into tiny jars. Or, like me, you can try to find a way to display your egg casings under a black light so they glow and they look kind of cool. Don't ever stop learning, keep researching. There's a lot of resources out there and things that you can access online and in books all over the place that you can learn even more about these seashells, their life, where they live, and hopefully how to find more of them once they're gone. So enjoy, I hope you learned something new. for today's episode. Thanks so much for joining me on another Treasure Seekers Virtual Adventures. We'll see you on the next one. Happy shelling, everybody.